High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Lucky Break. things of life. A briar on the beach, big sizzling steaks, and a good beer for a good thirst. Icy cold, rich and cold, down a lion, feel satisfied. Lion lager, the colder, the tastier, the better. Down a lion, feel satisfied. If you like smoking cigarillos, the best is El Cano. Filter-tipped El Cano is made from the finest cigar tobaccos, including leaf from Java and the West Indies. For a pleasant, new smoking experience, try a pack of El Cano cigarillos today. You'll like them. El Cano, ideal for smoking anywhere, anytime. El Cano. Not long after the war finished, I was a member of the five-man crew on a small motor yacht. Her name was Sadie Girl, and was employed carrying small cargoes from port to port in the Caribbean and the Central American coast. It was a lazy, easy-going life. The pay was peanuts, and none of us, not even the skipper, Hugh Mackay, took the job very seriously. We were more or less killing time until the world settled down from the chaos of the war. I suppose you could have called us 1946-style hippies. Apart from the occasional seasonal hurricane, very little happened to write home about. Until one day. We had put into a small port in one of the banana republics, and early in the morning offloaded 30 crates of machine spares. We had to wait for clearance papers before leaving, but we were in no particular hurry to go. I was leaning over the rail just before midday, looking at the town. With me was Louis Benet, who looked after our twin diesel engines. Oh, it is hot, Stan. I think I'll sleep the afternoon away, just like these people here. Yes, the afternoon siesta is contagious, like the flu. I can understand it. The heat makes a man so weary. Yes, I know. Where I live, they call it Natal fever. <laughs> you make it sound like a bad disease. <laughs> oh, it is, Louis, believe me. <laughs> Look! What are those planes doing? Lightning low-level bombers. Maybe it is some kind of an air show. Oh, noisy damn things. Must have got them as a present from the Americans, so they have to show them off with... They are not showing off! Look! Hey, they're bombing the town. See? The way they go, bombing and shooting up everything. Careful, Louis. They're turning to come in again for another bombing run. What in heaven's name's going on out here? A bombing raid. Oh, the maniacs. What are they playing at? A revolution, I think. Get down! Uh, they're, they're, they're machine gun in the streets. Well, the fools are firing wide. It's better we all go down the road in this moment. The planes are coming back. You're right. Now they've gone. Look at that smoke rising over the town. The beggars must have caused a lot of damage. I wonder what all that was in aid of. I don't know and I don't care. The sooner we get our clearance, the happier I'll be. About ten minutes later, our shipping agent came on board and told us what was happening. The country was run by a President Barras, and a military coup led by a dissident General Diaz was succeeding. Motorized divisions of rebel troops were at that moment entering the town. Thinking that such matters were of little concern to us, we had lunch in the tiny mess room. Marty Baxter, an American, kept watch on the deck. From the town came sporadic bursts of shooting where the rebels met odd pockets of resistance. Yeah, can't we sail without the clearance, Skipper? We could do, but it isn't advisable. 
We have a good excuse, considering the conditions are sure. Uh, why don't we, then? I'd rather not. It can lead to awkward questions at the next port. Besides, the agent reckons he may be able to get us some cargo from here. Oh, is it worth it? Well, any cargo is worth it. As you know, the mainsail is getting a bit tatty, and I'd like to renew it the next time we're in Kingston. If there's an army officer coming on board, Skipper, he's got a dozen or so soldiers with him. And you fellows finish your lunch. I'll deal with him. He probably wants to check our papers. He's bringing two men on board with him, Skipper. He looks like an officious little jerk. Stop scowling, Marty. A smile goes a long way with these people. Buenas tardes, senor. I want el capitan. I'm the captain. <laughs> it seems like you're having something of a fireworks show in town. <laughs> I am Colonel Satado of the People's Revolutionary Army. We have occupied the town in the name of El General Diaz. That was quick, eh? But, but why the bombing raid? It is necessary to soften up the civilian population so they will receive us with little resistance. I want to see your paper, senor. Registration book, logbook, and your cargo manifest. Certainly. They're all here in the wheelhouse. Uh, you'll find everything in order. For your sake, El Capitan, I hope so. Uh, uh, the logbook. Mm -hmm. See? The registration certificate. Ah, here you are. Registered in Kingston, Jamaica. Hmm. What nationalities are your crew? Well, let me see now. There's Alec Jackson and me. We are British subjects. Marty Baxter, he's an American. And Stan Darrow, he's a South African. And finally, we have a Frenchman, Louis Benet. Yeah. I see by the registration that you are also the owner. Yeah, I am. Which makes you fully responsible for all the cargo you carry. I suppose so. Why? Is there something wrong? Is this the cargo manifest? Ah, see, I thought so. These 30 crates of machinery spares, are they still on board? No. We discharged them between 8 and 9 this morning. Are you aware of their real contents? Did you look? What would I want to look at machinery spares for? And what do you mean by real contents? Those crates contain German Schmeiser machine guns. What? You have been gun running, senor. Well, it's not my responsibility to open cargo, Colonel. But you are responsible for what this boat carries. And you were carrying weapons for the enemy. There. You see the name of the consignee? Hmm? Agencia de Mayo. What's wrong with that? It is the name used by President Barras when he wishes to import illegal goods. He was the president. What was to stop him importing arms legally? He was made president three years ago on the condition that no arms would be imported. He used these means to arm men who were loyal to him and the enemies of the militia. Well, I wouldn't have taken those crates aboard if I'd known that. I find that hard to believe, El Capitan. I think you were well paid for bringing them here. Only the usual cargo rates? I want those crates. My troops are poorly equipped. And those Schmeiser machine guns will be most useful. Well, I can't help you there, I'm afraid. See, perhaps it is too late. However, I'm very angry at what you have done. Well, I'm sorry, Colonel, but the weapons were innocently carried. There is much gun running in the Caribbean, and it is my duty to stamp it out as far as my country is concerned. But my boat is not a gun runner, Colonel. You carried guns which we can prove. It makes you a gun runner. But surely you must I understand repeat, that... you are a gun runner. Oh, now let's be sensible about this. Tell your crew to come out on deck. I want to speak to them. Ah, very well. But they know even less about this than I do. Just shout down the hatchway to them. Hey, down there. Come up on deck, will you, fellas? Something wrong, Skipper. Does that matter? Just come up here. Tell them to line up against the rail here. Stand against the rails, boys. What's all this about? An inspection? Silence, please. This vessel is herewith impounded by the People's Republic. But you can't. You Silence! You have been carrying illegal arms into this country. Rubbish. You think so? Ask your captain. Is that true, Skipper? I'm told that those crates we offloaded this morning contain machine guns. Did you know? No. Colonel Satado's only just told me. I will continue. The vessel is impounded, and I am taking your captain into custody. Until I can get an authority from General Diaz, what must be done with him? You can't do that. Oh, hey, Skipper, come Stand on. Stand still! 
My men will shoot you down if you attempt to interfere. Now, look here, Colonel. There's got to be some mistake. There is no mistake. As for you men, you will remain on board this boat until further notice. If you are lucky, you will be repatriated to your own countries. Is that fully understood? Oh, but this is crazy. I want to see the United States Consul. Consul? <laughs> we have no time to waste on consuls. Are you ready, El Capitan? Ugh, very well. Don't seem to have much choice. You have none. What could we do? We didn't even have so much as a water pistol on board to defend ourselves with. Helplessly, we watched Hugh being marched off to the town prison. Colonel Sotado placed two armed guards at the foot of our gangway with a warning that if any of us tried to get ashore, we'd be shot on sight. And we believed him, too. The firing in town had stopped by now, and the streets were nearly deserted. It was the time of the sacred siesta, when everyone other than those on essential duty had a nap. A nap that often lasted four hours. We didn't sleep, though. Instead, we watched the shore, wondering about Hugh Mackay's fate, not to mention our own. It seemed as though our idyllic lifestyle was about to be brought to a sudden conclusion. Just after one... A smart American car came to a halt at the foot of the gangway and Colonel Sotado marched aboard. He looked the four of us up and down like we were unsavory biological specimens and then announced, I regret to inform you that on instructions from General Diaz, your captain has been sentenced to death. A firing squad will execute him at first light in the morning. As a warning to other gun runners. Hey, you gotta be joking. To prove I am not joking, I shall arrange for you to attend the execution. But he hasn't had a trial. This country is under martial law. The only law is that laid down by General Diaz. What about us? We are satisfied of your innocence. As for the vessel, you are free to sail it away. After the execution, of course. Bon voyage. We stared at each other, stupefied. Hugh Mackay to die by firing squad? It was unthinkable. When the shock had died down, we trooped down the companionway into the tiny mess room. Louis made a pot of coffee while we pondered on how to handle the situation. Yeah, thanks, Louis. I need this. <clears throat> well, Marty, what do you think? Do we sail off and leave you to his fate? Seems a darn lousy thing to do. What alternative is there? Well, maybe one of us could go and see if there's a British consul in this dock. There isn't. It's not like a proper seaport. Yeah, besides that, you'll never get ashore. Those two armed monkeys are still at the foot of the gangway. Well, we'll just have to grin and bear it. With an I'm all right, Jack, attitude? Well, have you got a better plane? The back wall of the prison is less than a hundred yards away from the ship. We can see it clearly from the deck. The ancient pointed it out to me this morning. So what's that going to do with anything? Well, I reckon that siesta time's the best time to make a commander raid on it. Are you out of your skull? Yeah, so who's joining me? Genoeg turf om hoor als in te verrug. Gestevelige spoor vir enige strukkelblok. Baie soos dat soen bakkies. Op het denk toetsterrein moes hulle wees wat in hulle steek. Een dubbelband staalbak vir alle aansla. En geriep wat die denkbemanning verstommet. Dat soen 1400, 1800, King Cab en vierwiel aangedrewe trekke. Kracht. Economie, betrouwbaarheid, gemak. Dat zijn bakkies, denk genoeg voor die duiste dag. Rothman's Extra Length, Finest Filter and the best tobacco money can buy give true king-size flavor. That's why, all over the world, Rothman's King Size is offered with pride, accepted with pleasure. Rothman's King Size really satisfies. Come down to 
they're worth, Stan? What do we use for weapons? Well, the rifles those two guards have look okay to me. Are you really serious? Well, I'm certainly not going to sit around here while they prepare to shoot Huey. It's not practical, Stan. Look, how do we get over the wall into the courtyard? And then we have to get into his cell. There's likely to be dozens of soldiers guarding the place, too. We'd be lucky to get across the street in one piece. The whole idea stinks, man. Mm. Take no notice of them, Stanley. I'll go with you. Thanks for the offer, Louis, but we need you on board to get the engines ready for a very rapid departure. I don't know. It's a pretty tough assignment. We'd be sure to get our rear ends blown off. Not the way I see it. Uh, the way I see it is all five of us facing a firing squad in the morning. Have you already worked out a plan or something? A good one. Plans of a nasty habit of backfiring, Stan. I was a commander of operations officer during the war, Alec. I should know what is possible and what isn't. Yeah, but it's still lousy odds. Our four lives being risked for just one. I ain't got no inclination to be a dead hero. No, me neither. Look, if we leave it much later, all the locals will start waking up from their siesta, then we have no chance. But if I show you a workable plan, will you join me? Marty? Sure. If I think it's workable. Alec, what about you? Let me hear the plan first. That's more like it. Okay. Now, I don't know how observant you are, but did you see that mobile crane just ahead of us? I knew all along they'd join me. They just wanted convincing, that's all. I didn't dare express my own doubts to them. Instead, I brimmed over with enthusiasm. It was catching, like the flu and siestas. I've learned from experience that the simplest plans are always the best, and this was simple to the extent of lunacy. Enclosing the prison courtyard was a 15-foot wall with broken glass on the top. After shinning up our mast, I could see a row of cell windows running the length of the building, which was single story. I was gambling that the skipper was locked up in one of them. I'd better go and get the engines ready. Good luck to you. Thanks, Louis. We're going to need it. Have you finished tying that rope to the life belt? Yeah, let's go. Marty and I each had a cork life belt with a long length of rope attached. At the head of the gangway, we made as if to tie them onto the rail. The two soldiers were chattering to each other, but quickly turned and unslung their rifles when they saw Alec walking casually down the gangway. Ojo! Aquí, amigos! Curious, the men walked over to him. They were suspicious, too, their eyes glued only on Alec. That was when Marty and I did our cork lasso act. It all happened in a few seconds. The guards were less than ten feet away and slightly below us. The life belts dropped over their heads, and we gave a hard tug on the ropes, bowling them over. Uh, Grab their guns, Alec! As the guards went down, Marty and I jumped and ran to help Alec, who kicked one and grabbed his rifle. The other soldier brought up his rifle at Alec just as Marty lashed out at him from behind. Uh, not so fast, pal. Oh, good man, Marty. I'll take his gun. What do we do with them, Stan? Cut their throats, huh? No, Marty, just leave them. We don't want any unnecessary killing. Yeah, Stan's right, so put that knife away. I won't come around for quite a while yet. Come on, let's make a run for that mobile crane and keep low just in case. We made it in fast time. Still, we hadn't seen another living soul apart from the guards. The stinking heat and humidity was working for us like a charm. Marty managed to start the engine. We moved out into the road and toward the prison wall. Alec was driving. Aim right for the middle, Alec. The jib's too high. Bring it down a bit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Just a bit closer now. Okay, okay, that's dead right. Marty and I climbed the jib, the top of which was protruding over the wall. Alec let down the hook to the ground on the other side of the wall. Hey, hey, it's worked like magic, Stan. We have a long way to go yet, boy. Now, you stay up there on top of the jib and give me covering fire if the screws start coming out. Okay, but I'll bet you 50 bucks are still asleep. I used the cable to get down on the inside of the courtyard. I quickly looked around, barely able to believe my luck had held out. It was still deserted, 
and the only prisoner not taking a siesta was staring at us from a barred window. It was the skipper. He waved. I grabbed the heavy hook and signaled to Marty to tell Alec to slacken the cable. When I heard the winch reversing, I started to drag the hook toward the cell block. It was heavy. The more the cable was paid out, the heavier it got. To make matters worse, I was expecting a fusillade of shots in my direction at any second. I thought I was never going to make it. Was the cable long enough? Yes, I was there. All bad things come to an end. The skipper's face was lined with excited tension. Oh, you're a hero, Stan. I thought I was going to be... Never mind the flattery. Help me hook this through the bars. Right, man. I've got it. Oh, you're a ruddy genius. All right. Is it firm? Or like a rock. Okay, skipper. I'm going back to the wall. As soon as those bars snap out, get out and run like fury. Just grab the cable and Alec will winch you up. You got that? Go on, Stan. I'll make it snappy. As I ran back for the wall, I signaled to Marty who passed it down to Alec. The winch drum turned, the cable tightened and took the strain. Nothing was happening. There was a loud metallic clang above my head. The strain had forced the jib down onto the top of the wall. Something had to give. The cable's got to go! Never mind, tell Alec to keep heaving. The rear wheels are up off the ground, Stan. It won't take much more. Cracks started to run out along the white wall from the cell window. I could see what was going to happen and hoped the skipper would have the presence of mind to move away from the window. Half of the prison wall fell outwards in a cloud of dust. It was an amazing sight and must have awakened up half the town. I hoped the skipper had a good sense of direction because the dust was like a smokescreen and the caving in of the wall must have released at least a dozen or more other prisoners. Beside me, the loose cable was being reeled in at full speed. Using a handkerchief to protect my hands, I took a firm grip on the cable when it slowed down and was pulled up to the top of the wall. Here's where the battle starts, buddy. Don't fire yet. They haven't seen us. They're more than likely trying to round up the other prisoners. Well, where's the skipper? He must... There he is. Skipper, hurry up. Get down there with Alec. He may be needing some covering fire. Grab the hook, skipper. That's it. Hold tight. Okay, Alec. Heave away. Oh, you practically pulled the whole blessed building down. Here, grab my hand. That's right. Now, easy now. Easy, oh, easy. Huh. I'll bet they haven't even missed me yet. It's sheer chaos down there. Are you okay? I never fit it. Well, let's get down that jib then. After you. It was when we got into the mobile crane that the first shot was fired. Straight for the boat, Alec. I'll keep him down. There he is behind that tree. Lousy shot, Marty, but he's gone to ground. Okay, we'll both keep an eye on him. If he just shows so much as a finger. He gave us no more trouble. In fact, he was probably the only soldier in the place who really knew what was going on. Alec pulled up beside the gangway and we went up like cats with firecrackers tied to their tails. Louis had watched us coming and was standing by his engines. Alec and I dragged in the gangway while the skipper and Marty cast off fore and aft. Stan! Marty! You two cover the shore side with those rifles while I steer out of the harbor. We slipped out of the harbor only just in time. Troops and armored cars appeared from nowhere. But by the time the firing started, we were already out of range. We were lucky they had no naval launches to take up pursuit. As the land slowly became a dirty smudge on the horizon, we all breathed a loud sigh of relief. Half an hour later, the skipper broke out a fresh bottle of rum and invited us into the mess room for a drink. Ah, well, that was a smart piece of work, boys. I can't thank you enough. (laughs) I'm real proud of you. Oh, it is Stan you have got to thank. It was all his idea. No, 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 no. It was teamwork that made the day. Well, here's to you, Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. To you, Stan. Nice to have you back. <sighs> well, that's great. Where are we heading for now, Skipper? Cartagena. I reckon it's time we all had a few days off to uh, to drink and to entertain the ladies. Huh? <laughs> And what do you say? Ooh, oh, I can't yeah, 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 but hang on. What'll we use for money, Skipper? We can't have made much on that last run. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
I'll give you each an extra hundred dollars. How's that? A hundred bucks? From a Scotsman? Without being asked? Uh Uh-uh. What's the catch? No catch. You deserve it for what you've just done. Okay, so where's all the dough coming from? From the proceeds of our last cargo. I was paid well for taking those guns. You knew about it? Why, of course. Man's got to make a living. You, know. you could have had us all executed. Oh, well, one must take a risk occasionally. What do you reckon, Marty? I'll tell you what I reckon. I reckon we should fling him over the side. Yeah, me too. Uh, hey, no, 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 wait a minute. What are you all looking so, so, so angry for? You don't know? Well, not really. I'm giving you your share, aren't I? Oh, yes, you are. And you're going to double it. Because when we get to Cartagena, my trading days are over. Double it? Yeah. Unless you like, we throw you back to your pal, Colonel Sotado. I still remember the first time we met. Where would so much milk be going, I asked. Oh, not very far, she smiled. Milk doesn't go very far when there's Cadbury's chocolate to be made. Not when you need a glass and a half just to make one slab. Mind you, is it not a very thick slab, said I. Cadbury's chocolate. Thick with a glass and a half of milk. A sick well at full. Die bedrijvige, veel eisende lewe wat jy lei, verg baie van jou maag. Sprankelende, verfrissende, eno, actieve vruchtesout, begin dadelijk oortollige maagsuur neutraliseer om jou maag na sy normale toestand te herstel. Eno, sit weer lus in die lewe. Sprankelende, verfrissende eno, voel jou oorlikheid weg. Eno, actieve vruchtesout, gewone of verfrissende suurlimoen, noodhulp vir maag. I stuck to my plan. When we arrived at the Columbium port of Cartagena, I took my money and worked my passage on a cargo ship back to South Africa. And now, the only boating I do rarely ever takes me out of Durban Harbour. However, I've often since wondered how many times Hugh Mackay had run guns without our knowledge. I very much doubt if that had been the first time. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.